We're not crying, there's just something in our eyes. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times talk show hosts cried on TV. For this list, we're looking at those highly emotional moments on talk shows when the host was brought or almost brought to tears while on TV. Number 10. Kelly Clarkson Meets an Inspiring Mother – The Kelly Clarkson Show While Kelly may have spent the past few decades making us all cry with her stunning vocals and heartbreaking lyrics, she's now on the receiving end of that sob fest as she meets with inspiring guests on her talk show. This was perhaps most evident during her interview with Rachel Handy, a domestic abuse survivor and mother of five who's faced financial struggles due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Our bills are piling up, we have a mortgage to pay, and honestly, I just don't know how much longer we can keep this up. Despite being laid off from her job and almost losing her house, Handy and her family decided to make meals for the homeless as a way of giving back to their community. We all feel like, woo! <laughs> Um, we all feel like you're, woo, I'm good. It's safe to say this was enough to have Kelly choking back a few tears. So thank you so much for being just such a great example and know that like even on those days when you feel like, oh, I'm failing, you're not. It's just a bad day. Number nine, Steve Harvey breaks down on his birthday show. Steve Harvey. We may not know what it's like, but we can imagine that having a street named after you is a pretty emotional experience. All of us are here. And if mom and dad was here, dad would be saying, do you know I'm his daddy? <laughs> and mama would be just shaking her head. So we love you, Steve, and you have a very happy birthday. During a surprise celebration for Steve's 58th birthday, his family, friends, and the Cleveland mayor gave the talk show host the gift of a lifetime naming part of the street he grew up on Steve Harvey Way, as well as declaring January 17th, Steve's birthday, Steve Harvey Day. On behalf of the people of Cleveland, I'm honored to offer this proclamation designating January 17, 2015 as Steve Harvey Day in recognition of your 58th birthday and the ceremonial rededication of a portion of East 112th Street as Steve Harvey Way in the city of Cleveland. While Steve was visibly emotional during the entire surprise, it wasn't until the camera panned to video footage of his late mom's old house that Steve got so emotional he had to turn his back to the audience. It's my mama's house. Number 8. James Corden on the 2017 Westminster Incident – The Late Late Show with James Corden After a terrorist attack killed four pedestrians and injured many more in London, James Corden took to his talk show to speak about the tragedy that took place in his hometown. Corden got visibly upset while speaking about the horrifying incident. Our thoughts go out to everyone who's been affected by this. While he held back most of the physical evidence of tears, he clearly got choked up while expressing his feelings of homesickness and his desire to be with his family and fellow Londoners during the heartbreaking time. You don't have a feeling of being glad that you're so far away. What you feel is that you wish you could be there with loved ones to to stand alongside them. While Corden was not able to be home in the wake of the Westminster attack, Corden sadly had to address another attack in London on London Bridge a few months later, though he was able to do so on his own terms this time from his beloved hometown. I'm so proud to be broadcasting here from my hometown. I'm proud to show off its beauty, its diversity, and its stoic British determination to let nothing or anybody stand in our way. This is not a country that feels afraid. Number seven, Ellen sobs over failed dog adoption. The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Today is a hard day for me, today is bad. And I am not capable of coming out and pretending to be funny and on when things are going so terribly wrong right now. Ellen is no stranger to the world of animal adoption, with seven adopted pets of her own as of 2020. Unfortunately, she didn't read the fine print when adopting dog Iggy in 2007, when she and her wife Portia de Rossi still had six pets. After realizing that she wouldn't have enough time or energy to ensure Iggy got along with their other animals, Ellen decided to give the dog to her hairdresser's family. However, this ultimately went against the contractual agreement of the adoption and resulted in the dog being taken away from the heartbroken family. After finding out the dog had been taken away, Ellen 
Caitlin went on her show to weepingly plead for Iggy to be returned to the family. And I feel totally responsible for it, and I'm so sorry. And I'm begging them to give that dog back to that family. I just, I just want the family to have the dog. It's not their fault. It's my fault. She was notably unable to keep her composure as she talked about how guilty she felt about the situation. So I'm sorry. Ah, what a great show we have today. <laughs> Oh, God. Number six, Oprah announces the end of her show, The Oprah Winfrey Show. Oprah was a staple on TV screens across the world for 25 years. So her departure from her widely famous talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, was sure to be an emotional one. So I wanted you to hear this directly from me. Despite the series' tremendous success and incredibly dedicated fan base, Oprah made the decision to step away from the show in 2009, following its 25th season in 2011. I love this show. This show has been my life. Despite keeping her composure through most of the announcement, the host could be seen choking back tears as she begins thanking her audience for inviting her into their lives for so long and for, quote, enriching her life. 25 years feels right in my bones and it feels right in my spirit. It's the perfect number. Can someone pass the tissues? Number five, Meghan McCain returns to The View after her father's passing, The View. While The View is known for its fiery hot topic conversations and sometimes controversial takes, it is rare that we get to see emotional moments on the show quite like the return of host Meghan McCain following the death of her father. All of you, I just want to start with you, Whoopi. My father loved you. He loved you. He really loved you. I'm sorry. No, no. It's okay, baby. Take your time. Megan, who spoke openly about her father's battle with brain cancer leading up to his death, was holding back tears as she received a warm welcome from audience members and her View colleagues. I have missed, I have missed all of you so much. Thank you so much, Whoopi. I missed all of you ladies so much. While Megan was visibly emotional for the entire segment, it wasn't until she began discussing the support she had received from her fellow hosts that she completely broke down crying, saying that, None of us agree at this table on very much when it comes to politics and the world, but we are all sisters here yep. supporting each other. We got your back, and girl. This, but this is what America could be. <laughs> Number four, talk show hosts remember Kobe Bryant, various. After the shocking 2020 news that legendary basketball player Kobe Bryant passed away in a tragic helicopter crash alongside his daughter Gianna and seven other victims, many talk show hosts took time to remember the NBA star and pay tribute to all the lives lost. He was special. He was a special person, a great basketball player for sure, but more than that, he had uh, so many interests outside of sports, he was intensely curious. Among the most emotional were hosts Jimmy Kimmel, who opted to tape the tribute episode without a studio audience as it, quote, didn't feel right. Jimmy Fallon, who teared up as he shared the hilarious memory of how the two had met. And when we'd run into each other over the years, we'd laugh about that night that we first met. <laughs> we'd laugh at all the good things that had happened since and Ellen, who struggled to keep herself together as she urged her audience to, quote, celebrate life in the face of such a devastating tragedy. Life is short and it's fragile, and we don't know how many birthdays we have, so just, we don't want to have a birthday to celebrate, just celebrate life. And if you haven't told someone you love them, do it. Number three, Jimmy Kimmel discusses the 2017 Las Vegas incident, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Jimmy Kimmel is not shy about his love for his hometown of Las Vegas, so when the incredibly disturbing Las Vegas mass shooting occurred in 2017, it was evident that the longtime host would be heartbroken by it. It's the kind of thing that it, it makes you want to throw up or, or give up. It's too much to even process. While Kimmel was teary-eyed throughout the entire opening monologue, he also appeared upset and frustrated as he discussed the prevalence of mass shootings in the U.S. and pleaded for stronger gun control. Common sense says you don't let those who suffer from mental illness by guns. In true Kimmel fashion, Jimmy also went on to call out the hypocrisy of politicians who sent out their thoughts and prayers while simultaneously, quote, letting the gun lobby run this country. I'm sorry for getting emotional. I'm, I'm not great with this kind of thing, uh, but I just think it's important, you know? Number two, Jimmy Fallon talks about his mother, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon doesn't stray from his lighthearted demeanor often. However, following the passing of his mother, Jimmy returned to The Tonight Show, where he got candid about his mother's death. Thank you for watching. Thank you for helping me and my family recover from this loss. Mom, I'll never stop trying to make you laugh. I love you. Love you. More to <laughs> 
During the episode, Fallon was emotional while retelling a childhood memory of his mom squeezing his hand three times to say, I love you, while going on to say that he repeated the sentiment to her while she was in the hospital. I just hide and I grabbed her hand and I squeezed, I love you. And I just knew we were in trouble, you know. If that's not enough to make you cry, later in the show, Taylor Swift performed her song New Year's Day, which includes the lyrics, Squeeze my hand three times in the back of the taxi. The coincidence, according to Tonight Show producer Mike Desenzo, was enough to bring Jimmy to tears once again. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Portia de Rossi surprises Ellen for her 60th birthday, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. So for your birthday, Ellen, I am bringing you and your hero, Diane, together by building the Ellen DeGeneres campus of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. Ellen, you will carry on Diane's legacy by giving them a permanent home. Jay Leno says goodbye to The Tonight Show, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And uh, after that, I was pretty much out of family. And the folks here became my family. Consequently, when they went through rough times, I tried to be there for them. Craig Ferguson eulogizes his mom, the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Whatever they are, they're together again. And, uh, and, and he's getting the news. We'll be right back, all right? John Stewart says goodbye to The Daily Show. The Daily Show. All of us <laughs> who were lucky enough to work with you for 16 years are better at our jobs because we got to watch you do yours. And we are better people for having known you. Whoopi Goldberg cries over the death of Mike Nichols. The View. This morning. This morning, news broke that entertainment pioneer Mike Nichols died suddenly of cardiac arrest while at home with friends and family. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jimmy Kimmel Reveals His Son's Heart Disease – Jimmy Kimmel Live Jimmy Kimmel is no stranger to getting choked up during his shows, but when he revealed that his son Billy was born with a heart condition and had to undergo heart surgery at just three days old, it was a different story. So now more doctors and nurses and equipment come in, and it's, it's a terrifying thing. I'm, uh, you know, my wife is back in the uh, recovery room. She has no idea what's going on. Kimmel, who returned to hosting Jimmy Kimmel Live less than two weeks after Billy's birth, was emotional while retelling the story and struggled to get through thanking all the doctors and nurses who had saved his son. I'll never be able to thank him for, uh... so I won't even try, is what I'm <laughs> saying. Jimmy didn't stop there, though, as he went on to emotionally discuss the proposed defunding of the National Institute of Health and the detrimental effects it would have on families around America. No parent should ever have to decide if they can afford to save their child's life. It, it just shouldn't happen. Not here. So, uh, anyway, thank you for listening. I promise I'm not going to cry for the rest of the show. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.